Lord, everybody. And it's good to see grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Oh, it's good to see you all. I'm so thankful for a wonderful day at our conference today. Those who were in the day session, did you not enjoy our conferences? And we are delighted to have you. Let's get ready to have a wonderful evening. Let's stand to our feet. Smile at someone. Tell them I'm so happy to see you. I don't know what to do. Praise God. Praise God. Let's get ready to pray and ask the Lord's blessings on tonight. And let's see what God wants to do in this place. Come on, lift those hands, lift those voices. Let's call on the Lord together. Lift your hands all over the place. Father, we just give you praise. We thank you. We glorify you. We thank you for tonight as we've come to bless and to lift up your name. Oh, you're worthy to be praised. Have your way now. We've come to bless you and exalt you. We will do this in the name of Jesus. Everyone shout amen. amen. Give God a praise. Let's worship. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Oh, God, we bless you. We glorify you. You are worthy of praise. Yeah. 
you, our God. Let's join together as we pray. Touch an elbow, touch a shoulder all over this room. Father, we thank you so very much. Right now, it is time to give you praise and to bless you. We exalt you in this house. We thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your healing touch in the room tonight. Thank you for your deliverances in the room right now. Thank you, Lord God, for your power that's in the room right now. Lord, we love you. We love you with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. We've come to bless you tonight. We've come to exalt you. Thank you. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Move in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Lord, we'll give you all of the praise. You know that's what we'll do. We'll give you all of the glory. We'll give you all of the praise. We'll exalt you with all this within us in the name of Jesus. Come on, put those hands together and tell the Lord yes. Come on, tell the Lord yes. Come on, tell him yes. In the name of Jesus. Before you take those seats, Go ahead and greet one another. Welcome everybody to the house of the Lord. Introduce yourself to them if you don't know who they are. Make them feel at home. Come on, all over this room. Praise God. You may be seated. All right, y'all. You may be seated. And again, you may be seated. <laughs> if I let y'all go, y'all will go all night. Praise God. Well, I tell you, we had such a wonderful time on this uh, morning and this afternoon, and uh, we're just so grateful for the Level Up Conference thus far. Certainly want to thank God for all of our pastors that have joined us from all over. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you for bringing your teams and being here. And I hope you feel at home here at the Center of Praise. It's our endeavor to make you comfortable and feel welcome in this place. And so thank you again for sacrificing and getting here. It's no easy task to sacrifice your time, your money, and your resources to come and be here. We don't take that lightly. I was looking the other day, just yesterday, in fact, putting gas in the car at 5.65 a gallon. So I said to myself, self, <laughs> if God has blessed you to put the gas in the car, you ought to be grateful. You ought to be grateful. But I say that to say that I realize it was a sacrifice for several of you to get here and to travel to Sacramento. And I can't thank you enough. And I pray that you leave and go back with resources that will help your ministry to continue not to just survive, but to thrive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to move forward. It is time to minister to the Lord in cheerful giving. Let's clap our hands as we prepare our hearts to give. The ushers are coming in the aisles for those of you that have uh, your giving tonight that you would like to sow into the work of the ministry through check, cash, or money order. Just raise your hand high, and they'll be happy to serve you with an envelope. The remainder of us may raise our hands and, uh, or, excuse me, you may give through the envelope, or you may give as given to us on the screen through our Center of Praise mobile app, our Center of Praise website, text to give. And you may also give in the mail, as many of you have. Let us sow into the work of the Lord. How many believe this is good soil here at the center of praise? And 
And tonight we want to specifically sow into the ministry for our Level Up Conference. Uh, we want to be a blessing so that all of the expenses will be met, not only for this year, but we would have even more than enough for the conference on next year. So we want to give liberally and give generously because the Lord has been good to us, hasn't he? He's been good. Oh, come on. He's been better than that, y'all. He's been good to us. Praise the Lord. So let us prepare our gifts, and God bless you as you give. Let us stand together as we present ourselves and our gifts to the Lord. Let us make our confession of faith together, everyone repeating after me, into the kingdom of God. I sow my finances, every penny shall produce for God and for me. The gospel shall be preached, lives shall be changed, bodies shall be healed, souls shall be saved, Satan shall be stopped, and the needs of this ministry are already met. It shall produce through me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will God give back through me, through the hands of others, that I might give again? I count it as done. I know that it's done. I stand on God's word that it's done. Come on, smile real big at somebody and say it's done in Jesus' name. God bless you and you may be seated. Beloved, it is my honor and delight to welcome our guest tonight who is going to be ministering the word of God. I'm so thankful for him. I first became familiar with his ministry nearly 30 years ago. And uh, I remember when I first heard his name, I was actually down the street on South Hoover at uh, the Bethany Community Church with Bishop R.W. McMurray. <laughs> and uh, I remember they used to always talk about you had to go and check out this preacher by the name of Kenneth Omer. And uh, I'll never forget, I got my first cassette tape. You that were in the conference, you know what I'm talking about. It's the cassette tape. And I was listening to Bishop Omer minister the word of God. And I thought to myself, man, I would love to have him come and minister here in the center of praise. And uh, the opportunity afforded itself for us to invite him to come to the conference. We're going to have him again because we want him to come and speak to the entire congregation. But I'm so glad we get to hear him tonight and that he has come to minister and pour into us. You're going to be blessed. Listen, he recently repositioned in that God, uh, after serving faithfully as the senior pastor, at the Faithful Central Bible Church there in Inglewood. God blessed him to do a successful succession plan with his spiritual son, Pastor J.P., who was with us. Dr. J.P. Foster was with us. When was that? January? He came here. What did he do? He wrecked us. He blessed us immeasurably. Well, you're going to find out that the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. His spiritual father poured into him, and now we're blessed to have his spiritual father pour into us. And uh, he serves as the special assistant to the president of Biola University. I get an opportunity to converse and to work with him as we seek to do kingdom together. So you pastors and leaders that are here tonight, I pray that you prepare your heart to be blessed and take all the notes and resources and be inspired to go back and do more for Jesus. Amen? 
We're glad we're here. Give God a praise after this wonderful choir. Don't they look good, y'all? Y'all better sing good tonight. Amen. Let's receive the choir tonight. They're going to minister and bless us, the Celebration Choir, after they've rendered a couple of selections. The next voice you'll hear will be that of the Honorable Bishop Kenneth Ulmer. Let's prepare our hearts.
Give him praise, give him praise, everybody. Glory to God. Let's stand to our feet and receive our bishop as he comes. Father and our God, how we do bless and praise your name. Lord, we love you tonight. We look at our lives and see all that you have done. We say thank you. 
we look around and see what you're doing even as we speak. We say thank you. And then, Lord, based on what you've done and based on what you're doing, we, we have enough faith to thank you for what you're going to do even before you do it. You have some worshipers over here. You have some praises in this house. And we've come to give your name honor and glory. Now, Father, we ask that you would break up the fallow ground of our hearts and minds and spirits that we might be receptive soil for the seed of your word. It is to that end that I'm available for you now to use me according to your will. Stand in my body and think with my mind and speak with my tongue and say to us those things you'd have us know. And do it in the name of him who loved us enough to die for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. This time, this time, this, this time, this time, this time, this time. Only the folk that have been blessed give God a hand of praise, won't you? Ah, uh, uh, you can do better than that. You can do better. That's, that's a little patty cake. That's a little patty cake. That's a little. God's been better than that. Some, somebody ought to bless God just to make the devil mad. Just, just to spite, just to spite the devil. He thought he slapped the praise out of your mouth the last time he jumped on you, but he jumped on the wrong person that time. Lift up your voices and give God praise in this house. Hallelujah! You, 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 you may be seated if you can, if you can. Uh, if you can give me some more of this monitor down here, it would, it would help me. Amen. Wow, I... Uh, Choir, where, where, where is it? Where, where is it? Where, where is, yeah, that sister right over here. She, did y'all make her mad or what? Is she mad? What did y'all do to help me praise God for this music ministry, amen? For the band on the stand, all right? Wow, praise the Lord, amen. Wow, I... Uh, I'm 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 kind of shuffling. Uh, I've I've never been here before, and and you don't know me, and and I don't know you, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little time to look me over, and and I'm looking you over, and you you you're wondering if I'm gonna preach, and I'm wondering if you're gonna pray. So let's. Let's uh, let let's see what the Lord says. I I am I'm, I'm having a hard time. I'm, I I I saw that choir and heard that choir and and my mind I had flashbacks. Um, I, I'm, I'm I'm be all over the place. So I'm just telling y'all right now. It, it, I'm gonna be all over the place. So when I get into this and. About 10 minutes in, you said, girl, look like you. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be all over the place, okay? Uh, I, there's so many minds, things going through my mind. Um, let me just say this. Uh, in, in, in ministry, and I don't know where, where you guys serve, in, in ministry, you will never have a lot of real friends. Let me try this side over here. In, in this ministry business, you, you, you'll never have a lot of real friends, okay? Um, and you don't, you don't measure uh, friendship by the frequency of communication. In other words, your friends ain't always the folk that's up in your face all the time. You, you measure friendship by the commitment to the other person. And, and 
I'm, 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 I'm struggling. I'm struggling tonight because I, um, God has blessed me with to be in the presence of a friend uh, for. And let me saying, I'm nothing to do with the message, but um, I, I, I sat there about hearing how God can work it out and, and how, how He connects you in the spirit realm. Um, this man, sitting right here, Dr. Joe Slade, has, has been. He, um, yeah, 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 we, we, um, we used to go up and down this state, up and down this state, uh, he's a friend of, we've been friends 50 years, man, 50 years, that's a big number. Uh, and he and Cookie have, have been, uh, uh, they, they've redefined sticketh closer than a brother. And, uh, and while that choir was singing, man, I was having flashbacks of us, you know, in concerts and rehearsals and stuff. Um, and I, I thank God for this, man. Uh, we love you, man. We've been through many dangers, toils, and snares. And, uh, Sometimes it's, it's just a blessing to be in the house. And we honor you tonight, man. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. Uh, and I, I almost, I almost, seriously, I almost couldn't contain it. Um, his, his, his daughter and son-in-law. Our church, uh, Dr. Parnell was talking about our church, that church would not be what it is now if it were not for his daughter and son-in-law and the seasons that we serve together. Um, um, and then to see their daughter, uh, Dr. Corinne. I'm, uh, I'm so proud of her, I can't stand it. No, I'm serious. I, 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 it, it just just messed me up. Just messed me up to see these generational praises, you know. Uh, and and my, I travel with my son. My son, uh, so you, some of y'all, you'll get to the a, get to the point where you remember when you used to take care of your kids, and now your kids take care of you. Okay, you know what I'm saying? And he 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 takes care of me. We we've been around the world together. I honor him tonight. Um, I, uh, uh, I, 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 one of my sons, Brian, Pastor Brian Hunter, one of the most anointed, powerful men of God from, uh, from the Bay Area. It's just good to see you, son. Thank you. Um, I, um, I, 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 how, how many of you, because I don't know who's here, how many of you are members of this church? You're members of the church, okay? Okay, okay, okay. I don't know what you did, but God must really love you. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what your heavenly hookup is, but, but think about it, that God would love you enough to place you under the covering of this man right here. He must really, y'all got an inside track or something, y'all. Y'all know somebody up there, you know. Help me praise God for your pastor, okay? Wow. God bless you, my brother. Thank you, thank you. Th thank you for allowing me to come. I, um, I, 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 I want, let me just set the stage tonight. Um, I, I want to talk tonight about where you are. And I want to come back in the morning and talk about where you're going. Okay? Where you are now and, and where you're going. Um, 
There is a there is a passage of scripture that I want us to look at in First Corinthians, chapter four. Uh, I don't know how. Is there any paper? Is there, is there any paper Bibles in here at all? No, you have to ask nowadays. One uh, one 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 Sunday one Sunday at our church, the, the mothers sit right off in here in our church. And one, this true story, one Sunday, one of the mothers, one of the mothers, right after the service, she said, she said, Pastor, tell them children to turn them telephones off. <laughs> she, right, right down there, she, she said, Pastor, tell them children to turn them telephones off in this church. I said, what? She said, they've been on them telephones the whole service. She said, them, turn them telephones off. I said, Mother, I said, Mother, look, they, they, they're Bibles are in their phones. This is a true story. She said, oh, okay. This is a true story. To this day, that same mother, she got a Facebook page. She got an Instagram page. She, she, she's on social media. I ain't lying. Y'all ain't leaving us behind, baby. I want y'all to know. We got, we got y'all, okay? Turn me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I, I had to stop and tie that shoe because, uh, see, when you, when you, I'm 76 years old, and when you, when you, I clap for my own 76. You know, you know. When, when, when you, some of y'all young folk, and when, Corinne, when you get 76, baby, you see, uh, two things go. The first thing is your memory. And I forgot the second thing, but anyway, when I'm just saying, when you get to certain parts of your life, you better do it while you're remembering it, see? Okay. First, first, first Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter four. I, 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 want, I want you to join me as we look at this text in different versions, and I, I need you to use your sanctified imagination, okay? Let me just set the stage. I need you to use your sanctified imagination tonight. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9 says this. Um, we got an NIV. It says this. It seems to me that God has put us apostles on display. Watch this. At the end of the procession, like those condemned to die in the arena. Stop right there. He says, seems to me that God has put us apostles on display. Um, at the end of the processional, like those who are condemned to die in the arena. Okay. Uh, Eugene Peterson, in his, in his paraphrase of scripture, the message, the message, in this paraphrase of the message, he, he, he paraphrases this passage, and it comes out like this. It says, he says, um, in, in, in the message, he says, it seems to me, it seems to me, it seems to me uh, that God has put us who bear his message, listen now, on a stage. Listen, in a theater where no one wants to buy a ticket. He says, he says, here, here's, here's what ministry is like. It seems like, uh, like, like God, verse 9, not 5, verse 9, verse 9, okay? He says, it seems that God has put us who bear his message on a stage in a theater. Where, where no one wants to buy a ticket. Uh, the, 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 word, the word display is from the word theatron, from which we get the word theater. Uh, 
He says, he's, here's what ministry is like. It, it's like. It's like being on a stage. Got to use your imagination. In a theater that's empty. Because no one wants to buy a ticket. He, 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 he dramatizes what ministry is like. He says, um, you know, you're in this big theater and, and you're on the stage all by yourself. And the theater is empty. no one wants to buy a ticket. Now, 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 you, in your imagination, you, you, you've got to transport yourself uh, into a theater. And the, the producer is God. The, the director is the Holy Ghost. Okay. Can, can I say Holy Ghost around Holy Ghost? Okay. And the script is the Word of God. And the star of the show is Jesus. You're, you're, you're on a stage in a theater that's empty. The culture, the culture is not interested in your production. No one wants to buy a ticket. And so you'll stand and the producer says, go to your mark. And the director is the Holy Spirit of the living God. And the only script that you have is the word of God. But you're not the star. <laughs> Jesus the Christ is the star of this production. Now, 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 here, here, here we go. Because, because on this stage, um, in this production, that is no longer attractive to the culture. Listen, you play three roles. You, you're cast in three roles, okay? Number one, you're a leader. Number two, you're a servant. Number three, you're a steward. One more time. You're, you're in this production. You're on the stage, and you play three roles. See, you're a leader. Um, in, in the book of Romans, the book of Romans. There, now there there are three lists of gifts in Scripture. Three lists. Uh, there's a list in First Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Those are gifts given by the Holy Spirit. There's a list of gifts in the book of Ephesians, and those are gifts given by the resurrected Christ. And then there's a list in the book of Romans that are gifts given by God the Father. In this Romans list, uh, in chapter 12, about, about verse 8, I think, it says, there is the gift of leadership. There is the gifting of leadership. You, 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 many of you guys are here tonight because you are in some position of leadership. You're a gift to the body of Christ. God has gifted you in this role of leader. Now, now that, 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 that word in, in, in Romans uh, chapter 12, verse six, 8, the, the word leader means to stand before. 
It means that God has gifted you and assigned you to stand out front. Now listen, there, there's an assumption with being a leader. The assumption is, if you're a leader, somebody is following. Let me just help you. If you're leading and no one's following, you're just taking a walk. You just yeah. Because the assumption of leadership is somebody is following you. The, uh, isn't it interesting? The, the most, the most, we have in our churches, we, we have the invitation. We used to do that in the invitation. I don't, I don't know how y'all do it, but, but it's the invitation. And isn't it interesting that Jesus' most common invitation was very simple. He just said, follow me. Think about that. Over and over again, he'd meet someone, he'd say, come follow me. Follow me. Uh, uh, line up behind me. I'm going somewhere. And Jesus said, come follow me. Many of you are here tonight because there's a gift, a calling, and an anointing on your life to be a leader in the body of Christ. Don't rush past that. Don't take that for granted. You, 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 you've, been, you've been chosen, handpicked by God, and given to the body of Christ as a leader. Paul, Paul said, Paul said, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And so God has called you uh, to, to lead. Don't downplay that. Don't minimize that. You, you're a gift to the body of Christ. You, you're a leader, which means that, listen to me, that, that God will assign someone to follow you. Give that again. It, go, he, he would go to people and, and he'd follow me and they'd follow him. Be, because God, God will assign. There are people, listen to me, there are people in this city, I don't, know, I don't know this community, but there are people in this city who are assigned by God to follow this man right here. They, they, their, their destiny, listen to me, their destiny is tied, inextricably woven within the fabric of their fellowship of this man right here. Because God assigns though. If he's called you to lead, he's called somebody to follow you. That's why preachers should never get upset and jealous uh, of what's happening at the church down the street. Uh, you know, because when it, it just means they ain't called to follow you. Because you are gifted, you are gifted to stand out front and lead. And God will assign someone to follow you. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere on this one. He says, he says, says he, he's placed us on this stage. And one of the roles that we play is we, we, we are assigned and called to lead. You're, you're a leader. Now watch this. Because some won't follow you. Let me, I don't know how many pastors say. Some will join the church but won't join you. Can we go to the deep end of the pool? Some will join the church but won't join you. There are those, the Bible says Jesus went to some and some did not follow him. You, 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 will, you will struggle sometimes with those who sit in front of you but won't get behind you. I don't know who that was for. I'm trying to help somebody. Because although God's called you and sent you as a leader, some folk won't follow you. Here's the next problem. Some will only follow you for a season. 
I'm telling you, the, one of the hardest lessons, most painful lessons I learned after 41 years at the same church. Everybody who came with you can't go with you. I'm going back on the side over here. It, it's, it's a hard lesson, man. It's a painful lesson, Brian, that, that, that you come to a point and everybody who came with you can't go with you. They, they, they were assigned to you, but they were only assigned for a season. You read in the Bible, and the Bible says they followed, and then it says, and it says, and many of them followed him no longer. Which means they followed him so far, and then they, they, they could go no further. One of the most painful lessons of leadership is that when God changes seasons, everybody can't go. Be, because there are those who came with you who can't go with you. When we, uh, when we, bought, we bought the forum, we, bought the forum um, we, we signed the contract on December 31st. The next day, New Year's Day, everything changed. We, we, we got turned down by almost 20 banks turned us down. And when we did the deal, it took six banks to finance the deal when we bought the forum. Lakers moved downtown to the, to the Staples Center, and we bought their home, the Forum. Six banks. Each of the six banks had six different formats for a monthly financial report. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere on this one. Six banks. All six had to receive every 30 days a report, and everyone had a different format. And about five months in, in May, the vice president of Bank of America, Bank of America came to me. He said, he says, Bishop, I never forget this. He said, this is the phrase because I can't forget it. He said, this baby is about to fall out of the bed. He said, and when it falls, the whole city will hear it. I said, what do you mean? He said, it's been five months and we have only received one report on time and it was wrong. Now, here's my point. The lady who was our CFO, her background was in real estate. And she pulled that deal together with her expertise being real estate. Between December 31st and January 1st, I needed somebody whose expertise was finances. And I learned the painful lesson. Everybody who came with you can't go with you. Some of you are pastors, some of you are pastors, uh, some of you are leaders, and you'll get to a point in that ministry where the people who prayed with you and loved you and sacrificed and came with you and struggled with you, but where God has taken you, they can't go. Because some will only follow you for a season. You're called to be a leader. And God will assign people to follow you. Some won't follow you. Because they're not assigned to you. Others are assigned to you only for a season because everybody who came with you can't go with you. You're on a stage in a theater and you play the role of a leader. Here's the second thing. Verse 1 of chapter 4 says you play two more roles. Chapter 4 verse 1 says you are all, we are called as servants. Let me work on that. Not only are you called to be a leader, you're called to be a servant. 
Now watch this, because that word for servant is a very unusual, unique word, only used one or two times in all of Scripture. It's a very unique, it's a very dramatic, uh, uh, very descriptive word for a particular kind of slave. Watch this. The word, the word for servant in verse 1 is a compound word. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. It's a compound word. And the root, listen, the root, the root of that word means to row, R-O-W. To row. The prefix of that word means, who pair, means beneath or underneath. Y'all ain't got it. It's a particular kind of slave. And that slave's job is to be a rower under the deck of the ship. Y'all got it over here. It's a particular kind of slave, and that slave's job is to row the ship underneath the deck. Okay, y'all and him. Y'all, y'all, anybody see, uh, some of y'all are too young. Remember the movie Ben-Hur with Charlton Heston? Remember that scene? Charlton Heston was in this word. That's his word. He was a rower. See, and, and all, all they did was row. But he was underneath the deck. Now, you are called to be a servant, a slave, and your job description is to row. It is not your job to know what the destination of the ship is. Lord, help me today. You, you, you don't determine where the ship is going. It's the ship of your life, the ship of your ministry, but you don't determine the port the destination of the ship. In fact, in fact, if you're a rower, you are going where you cannot see. Y'all ain't got it on this side. If you're rowing like this, you're going that direction. Which means you can't see where you're going. All you have to do is keep on rowing. When you can't see, when you've lost your bearing, when you don't know where you're going, God says, just keep on rowing. Where is this church going? Keep on rowing. Lord, where are we going next? Keep on rowing. Lord, what is our destination? Keep on rowing. What will we become? All you are called to do is keep on rowing because you do not determine the destiny of this house. Let me help somebody. I don't care what church you pastor. You can only see so far as to what God wants to do. But I declare unto you that your eyes have not seen and your ears have not heard. You cannot imagine the things that God has. All you are called to do is keep on rowing. You don't determine the destiny. You don't determine the destiny. Here's the second thing. You don't determine how many ports you stop at on your way to the destiny. Your job is to keep rowing. And there will be seasons where you feel stuck. There will be seasons where God will pull you into a port. It's rough. It's dark. Storms are raging. And you say, how long, Lord? Because you don't determine how many stops you make along the way. Here's the last thing. You don't determine how long the journey will take. Your job is to keep on rowing. You'll get tired. 
you get discouraged. You get angry sometimes. <laughs> They'll break your heart sometimes. Amen. You will weep with tears dripping down your face. But your job is keep on rowing. God brought someone here tonight, and that's your word. Tell your neighbor, keep on rowing. That's the wrong neighbor. Tell your other neighbor, keep on rowing. Your job is to keep on rowing. Now watch this, because verse 1 says that someone, they ought to consider us. God, I love your word. They ought to consider. One version says, let them regard us as servants. Now watch this. The word, the word for, for, for regard or consider uh, is, is the word, it, it's, it's the word legizomai, don't trip on that, from which we get our word logical. Here's what he says. He says, let it be logical when someone observes your life the word, it really means like, like a mathematical formula. Like you add something, you add it, you add, I don't care, the three, I don't care. You add, <laughs> and, and, and when you add it up, see, the conclusion is this. When they add up the elements of your life, it ought to be a logical conclusion. That's a servant of God. Yeah. It, it ought to be that obvious. That's a servant of God. When they put the pieces together and, and they see you and they watch you and they observe you and they turn the camera on your life and, and they videotape you from morning to evening. In the evening time, they ought to be able to logically conclude that sister's following Jesus. That, that brother's following Jesus. Ought to be logical. Now watch this, because he throws you a, dramat a grammatical curve in verse 1. Watch this. He throws you a curve. He says, let them account of us as, listen, servants and, verse it says, those in, in, entrusted, it means stewards. Everyone says servant. Everyone says steward. Watch this. He throws you a curve. You are called to play two roles, one of a servant, watch this, one of a steward. One more time. Let them regard us as servants and stewards. Listen, listen, listen. In verse 1 he says, you play two roles. But he throws you a curve in verse 2. Because verse 2 says, it is required. Verse 2 says, it's required of stewards. That's the wrong verse. Should be chapter 4, verse 2. We ain't practiced this, y'all. So y'all, we, we were... Of course, y'all figured it out 10 minutes ago, didn't you? We're didn't, we working this out, okay? Chapter 4, verse 2. It is required that those who are given trust, which is the word steward, be found faithful. Lord, help me on this one. Verse 2 says, there is a requirement. Watch this. That those who are stewards be found faithful. English 101, there's a problem in verse 1. Because verse 1 says, you play two roles, servant and steward. Verse 2 says, there's a requirement only for one. The logical syntax of the text should suggest that if there are two, require if there are two roles, there ought to be two requirements. That ain't what the brother said. He said, you play two roles, but there's a special requirement for the steward. Let me unpack that. The word steward means, uh, another compound word, it means the manager of a household owned by someone else. One more time. The word for steward means... It's a manager, it's an administrator of property or a house that they don't own. See, 
uh, it's a particular kind of servant and slave who, 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 who is given charge over what they don't own, that they don't own. Y'all ain't got that. Let me go back. Remember, remember slavery? Remember slavery? There were two. Y'all yeah. ain't been delivered that long, baby. Y'all don't. Remember in slavery, there were two, two classes of slaves. Field slaves. Black History 101, you got it. House slaves. Now watch this. The field slaves obviously worked in the field. The house slaves took care of the master's house. It was not their house, but they were given charge and trusted with the house that the master owned. Let me help you. The church of Jesus Christ is the house of God where you serve but you don't own. I helped somebody right there. That was worth your, that was worth your $5.49 gas to get here for that. It, it ain't your house. See? No. You are a manager of God's house. Now watch this. He says, in that role of managing the affairs of God's house, there's a special requirement for you. Where did it come from? Let me help you. Uh, in the morning, the house slaves, uh, would, would the, the, the manager, the, the master, would have a list of chores. It's going to make sense in a minute. And they would say, when I come back, I want to see that you've done this and this and this. See, it's, a, it's an assignment. Now, then the master would go away and do whatever masters do. Coming home that evening with the expectation and the requirement that while they were gone, the house slave had been faithful to complete the assignment. Y'all still with me? Let me help you. The church of Jesus Christ is the house of God. It's the house of Christ. He has gone away. A few weeks ago, we celebrated the resurrection. And the Bible says he is now seated at the right hand of the Father. But I got a news flash. One day, he's coming back, children. I got a news flash. One day, he will break the sky, the eastern sky, and the master shall return. And when he does, it is required that those who have been trusted with his house be found faithful. Watch this, watch this, watch this. When the master returns, he will return. The word means expecting with an expected destiny. He comes expecting that while the master was away, you've been faithful. What's the hook? When the master of the house leaves and goes to town or whatever and leaves the assignment, they trust you to do what you're assigned to do when no one is looking. So the question of the day is, who are you when no one is looking? When you 
take off your choir robe. <laughs> Who are you when no one is watching? When you say the benediction and go down from this place and the saints ain't around. Who are you when no one is watching? Because he expects to return and find that you've been a faithful follower when no one was watching. I'm ready to go home. I want to show you a verse you've never seen. I, I, I kid you not. If you've seen this verse before, meet me at the end of service and I'll give you a $10 bill. I'll give you a $5 bill. You've never seen this verse before. Look at verse, verse 5. I'm ready to go. So give, give me... Be a musician, think some play something small. Here we go. Watch this. Verse 5 says this. He says, Don't judge before the time. God, I love your word. He says, Don't give up too quick. I love it. He says, the things that have been done in the shadows. Let's go back to the stage. The things that you've done backstage. Things that you've done behind the curtain. Don't expect the applause from the people. You've never seen this verse. Verse 5 says, when the master returns, each one will receive, listen, praise from God. Don't be distracted by that. Don't be, no, 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 this is very important. When the master returns, the applause won't come from the people. When, when he returns, he's seen your heart. And each one will receive praise. One version says, Applause from God. Listen, 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 listen. You've never seen that. You, you thought, like I did, you thought, when we all get to heaven, we'll praise him. That's not what this says. This says when he comes, because you've been faithful. The applause will come from God. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Help me. I say that. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. When it seems as though that ministry is stuck, when you can't, when you can't, do it the way you used to do it. When, uh, when, uh, when, uh, uh, it seems you're in a dry spot. He says, the things that are done in the shadows. When, when you got out of bed to visit somebody else's child. When, when, when you got somebody else's grandbaby out of jail. When you went to pray for somebody at the hospital because no one else came. Never forget the first guy in our church who died of AIDS. Never forget as long as I live. 
I was in a hospital in Downey, California. And I went in to see him, and his skin was all uh, uh, ashy, all ashy. And I, and I, I went, Bishop, and I was just me, him, and the nurse. And I laid my hand on him, and I prayed. And a tear streaked his ashy face. And the nurse said, Bishop, you're the only one who has touched him. She said, she said, no one visits him. And there was no one in that room but him and me and an angel. And God says, the things you did in the shadows. The applause won't come from the people. You will receive, God, I love your word. You will receive your praise from God. I came, I came on assignment from Los Angeles. I don't know who you are. You, you have felt unappreciated. You have served. Your, your name was not called. You were not on the program. You, you were not center stage. God sent me here to tell you you will get a standing ovation from God. Here, here's, here, here, here's how I want to end. The Bible says, in your serving, whatever your hands find to do, do it. I, I want to close, I want to close, I want to close uh, with with a hand consecration. In a moment, in a moment, here's how I want to close. Uh, some of you may come to the altar, you don't have to. I'm going to ask you to come to this altar with your hands, listen to me. Some of you will come with your hands like this. Palms out. Some of you will come with your hands like this, palms up. Listen, listen. Palms out to release. Palms up to receive. Those times when you struggle, Lord, what next? Where does it go from here? I'm tired. I'm weary. I'm worn. This load has gotten heavy. You will come to release it. It's not your house. release others of you will come Lord I have nothing left I need to receive your strength I need to receive your power I need to receive your anointing again I need to receive more hope restore unto me the joy Paul says, we work with our hands. Everyone standing, everyone standing. Some of you may join me at this altar. You don't have to. 
some of you will come to release. You're holding on to something. A disappointment. A hurt. A brokenness. A betrayal. A scar. And you've been holding on to it. And God says, there's an anointing on your life. And your first step is to release the weight, the hurt, the scar, the struggle. Release. Others of you will join us and maybe in your seat, but you'll stand before God like this. And you'll say, Lord, I ain't got nothing left. My body is failing. My faith is failing. My trust is failing. My hope is failing. Lord, restore the joy. Restore the hope. Listen to me. I'm going to ask the angel of this house. Bishop is going to come in a minute. The overseer of your soul. The angel who leads this house to pray over you. In your release and in your receiving. That God has brought you here to take you into a new destiny. Where he and only he will get the glory. Come on, children. Yes. Come on. Yes. 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 Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. your voice and see yes. tell the Lord yeah Father, we thank you. This word has spoken right to us this moment. You know, Father God, why we have our hands raised and how we have them raised. So we thank you right now. We thank you for giving us just what we need. Thank you, Lord God, you hear and you see and you have not forgotten about us. 
thank you. Now, Lord, we're asking you right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to understand our role even below the deck. Help us to row. Thank you for giving us the power to row, the courage to row, the deliverance to row. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you that we see a breaking of day, that, Lord, you are working in us. We just want to hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. We just want to be obedient to you. So we tell you yes. Come on, children, open those mouths. We tell you yes. We say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your deliverance. We give you praise. We give you praise. Now come on one more time. Lift those voices. Lift those voices. Oh, tell the Lord yes. Now open those mouths. Open those mouths and give God worship. Hold the applause, but lift those hands and open those mouths and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the power of God. Be filled with the anointing of God. Be filled with the deliverance of God. Every yoke be broken in the name of Jesus. Open those mouths now, open those mouths. Open those mouths. Open those mouths. Lift those voices.
Hallelujah. Now, I'm asking you to do it for a reason because there's a, there's a release, there's a release that moves beyond the evening. There's a release that is pressing you forward into the next space of obedience for your life. There's, a, there, there's an obedience that is pressing forward into the next area of your assignment. So I want you, with all that's within you, from your innermost being, out your belly, innermost being, one more time, open those mouths and cry out to God in obedience and a yes. Come on out your spirit. Come on, give them that yes. Come on, give them that yes. That yes is your destiny. That yes is your design. That yes is tied to your assignment. Hey! Come on, open those mouths and give it to me. It's a total yes. It's a total yes. Out your belly. It's a total yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's tied to your next space. It's tied to the next step of your assignment. Oh, hallelujah. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Come on, give him a yes, Lord. Clap those hands and tell him yes. Clap those hands and say yes. Come on, clap those hands and say yes. Open those mouths and tell them, yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Come on, say yes. Come on, say yes. Come on, say yes. Hallelujah. As you go back to your seats, hug somebody and say, I'm giving them a yes, Lord, tonight. I'm giving them a yes, Lord, tonight. I'm giving them a yes, Lord, tonight. I'm giving them a yes, Lord. I'm giving them an obedient yes. Yes to them. Yes to them. Yes to them. Come on, hug somebody. Tell them it's a yes on my spirit. It's a yes in my spirit. It's a yes in my mind. It's a yes in my heart. Yes. Come on and give them a yes. Reach over and tell somebody, yes. Come on, say it's a yes, Lord. 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 Tell him yes. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. We got to go. Hey, we got to go. Hallelujah. We got to get ready to go. We got to get ready to stand your feet. We're going home. It's only 8.45. And we get ready to go home. Will you join me again in thanking God for Bishop Kenneth Homer? And... Center of praise, you know how we do. When we get a word from the Lord that has helped us in our assignment, we put a praise on it. When it's helped us where we're getting ready to go, we don't just sit here and say, that was nice. We put a high praise on it. 
So look at somebody and say, I'm going to give God a roll praise, a yes praise, a thank you praise, because I got what I need. Put your hands together and Come on, put a praise on. We get ready to go somewhere, y'all. And we will be faithful. Come on, put your praise on. Put those hands together. Thank him for that word. Come on, thank him for that word. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. Now, it's Friday night. I need somebody, anybody. Come on and hit this out. Come on, hit these out. Come on, Bethany. Let me tell you why I'm giving God praise for Bette tonight. Because Bette had just got a report three months ago that God healed her of cancer. Then last week, they found something, a spot or something going on in her body. And I told Bette, I said, Bette, don't even worry about it. You already got your healing. This word was for her tonight, that all she's got to do is be faithful. And God's got, I wish I had somebody hit this out and give it. I got one more thing for you to praise God about. All day long, we've been talking about a new generation that God is raising up in the kingdom of God. We've been talking about how God is going to use these young adults, these young men, these young women. I need somebody that's not afraid to give God praise. And you are thanking God for what he's doing in these young people, what he's doing in these young adults, in this church. I need about 10 of y'all. Hit the aisle. Put a praise on it. Come on here. man true.
One more thing. One more thing. I promise you I'm done. This whole year, the Lord told us to preach and teach about the Holy Spirit, about the Holy Ghost. I just have a feeling that there's an outpour that's in this room right now. There's an outpour. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be Hallelujah. Bishop, thank you so much. I love you, my friend. Thank you for letting the Lord use you. You were assigned to us tonight. And we were assigned to you. And we give God praise for you. Thank you. Tomorrow morning, we have prophetic prayer at 8 o'clock at um, the chapel, the Mole Chapel across the street at the Legacy Center. And uh, that's the great big red brick building where we were at today. So for you that are with us for the first time, we'll be back across the street at the Legacy Center at the Mole Chapel at 8 a.m. And our dear sister, Lady Natalie Lewin Spicer from Richmond, California, will be leading us in prayer tomorrow morning. And uh, you will want to be there. If we have to move it to the sanctuary across the street, we will do that if it gets packed out. But uh, we start at 8 o'clock sharp, and then we continue on. And uh, Pastor Phyllis, you want to run up and give us any instructions as far as what we can expect for the rest of the day on tomorrow real quick? You, 
8 o'clock prayer. If they get there, they'll know the rest. All right, get to 8 o'clock prayer, and then we will have our, um, they'll have some continental breakfast. And then I have the opportunity to moderate a panel of three young leaders, emerging leaders in our church, one including our very own Dr. Aaron Harris. You will not, listen, I, if you've registered, you will not want to miss that um, candid conversation. I, I, I can't get into it tonight. I'll just tell you this. I was having lunch with Dr. Harris this week, and he shared something that brought me to tears. Brought me to tears. Man has two master's degrees, a doctorate degree. Gifted, you all know that. But he shared something with me because I asked him the question, what do I need to know as a mentor that I need to know to help you be what God wants you to be? And he opened up and shared something I would have never imagined is the hindrance and the block for many to receive the impartation from one generation to another. I had no idea. I was naive to it. And he opened his heart and shared something that I did not know God blessed our relationship that he overcame something in order to receive what I've been assigned to give to him. I had no idea. Only those conversations can be held between fathers and sons and fathers and daughters. And when you have it, you're sitting there amazed but when you hear it, then you realize what God has called us to be for each and every one of those in this generation that we're to impart to. So I'm so excited about what's going to happen all day tomorrow. Kent, I was walking around today listening to our young adults leading, Brother Michael Casper and others. I had my, and serving, I had my chest stuck out like a foster farm chicken. I couldn't have been more proud, more proud. So, uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow, you come and join us. Now, y'all looking at me like you're ready to go. I'm going to let you go. Don't worry about it. You're going to go to Popeye's anyway, so I'm going to get you out of here. Can we thank the Lord for this band and the choir tonight? Our choir, our celebration choir, Minister Huey. That choir was made up of folks from all of the different churches from throughout our city that came together along with some from our own choir. Give them another hand and appreciate them. <laughs> Minister Huey Lovelady, thank you. God bless you so very much. Smile at somebody say, I'm so glad you came tonight. Come on, do like this. Come on, do your hands like this. Say, I need you to row. Come on. I'm going to let Bishop come and say one last thing and send us on our way. You know, we're going to act like we're in the Baptist church. You got, Bishop, you got to come and, you know, close us out and have, one, have last words is what they used to say. Would you come and just bless us with some last remarks and words and let us know uh, just what God puts on your heart and then we're ready to get up out of here. Come on, let's receive Bishop. He's going to close us out and send us home. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the power of God, the very presence of the Holy Spirit, go before you to lead you, beside you to protect you, behind you to push and encourage you, above you to cover you, beneath you to sustain you, and in you 
to fill you with his presence and power that your life might bring honor and glory unto him. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.